respected Dr. Karan Singh, my dear friend Raji Pawar, my very naughty friend Vijay Thadani, <laughs> Dr. Pandey, and dear, dear students and friends. At the outset, I want to warmly congratulate the graduating class of 2013 and wish you every success and every rewarding success at that in your life ahead. I do feel privileged to address you as young citizens of our country who will lead India's future. I realize that you may not see yourselves that way. Like most students, your thoughts of the future may not go beyond applying for jobs or overseas college admissions for further studies or just partying tonight with your friends. However, the fact remains that each one of you is a vital unit of the generation that will shape India's destiny. A generation that I hope will focus on improving the lives of fellow citizens and enhancing our country's position in the world. And therefore, the task that I have been set to address you, to perhaps inspire you, is certainly a challenging one. As I sat down to think about what I wanted to share with you, I cast my mind back to my own college days, both in Bangalore and in Australia, almost four decades ago. What stood out was how formative my college years were in guiding me through every step of my entrepreneurial journey and molding me as an independent thinker, both personally and professionally. I also remember how a few of my professors at college made a lasting impression on me and to whom I owe a great deal. What made them very special in my eyes was that they taught me how to think for myself, to try to excel in everything I did, and to do things differently and creatively in order to make a difference. These exceptional professors discouraged us from being fixated on studying to get marks, but instead taught us to explore and experiment and earn our marks. One had to think differently, not copy what others were saying and doing. In fact, they incentivized those of us who interpreted the subject differently and encouraged us to develop our own perspective and personality. Science is about curiosity-driven learning, is what one of them said, and something that is still etched in my mind even today. And unless you are not curious, you will never find science interesting and exciting. It is this approach that has allowed me to pursue a path of innovation. Innovation, as I understand, is both about doing things differently and about doing different things. These are lessons I have integrated into my own DNA and extended it to our corporate culture at my company, Biocon. Right from the time I began my entrepreneurial journey, Differentiation has been my guiding principle and the essence of my leadership style. From pioneering the business of biotechnology to pursuing a research-driven business model. In fact, differentiation is our company's motto. We proudly say the difference lies in our DNA. This conviction is visible in our business approach, our business strategy, and in our products. And I can proudly say that my sense of conviction and my strong belief in the power of innovation have their roots in my college education. And I'm really pleased to see that research and research projects were quite a focus when 
Dr. Thadani just spoke about his message to the students. The company I built after I stepped out into the world has these college learnt lessons as its foundation. Another lesson I learnt was from my late father when I was ready to enter the portals of medical college. I had an unexpected and rude shock when I did not make the grade and I turned to my late father to get me into medical college by paying capitation fees like many of my friend's parents had done. He refused to do so and taught me an important lesson in meritocracy and about not having a sense of entitlement. What he said to me resonates with me very strongly even today. I have provided you with the best of school education, he said, and if your efforts have not helped you to get admission into medical college, it means you haven't worked as hard as someone else who has made the grade. And these are the words I really want every one of you to remember. Money is not the currency with which you buy favours, but a currency with which you make a difference to society. And this is something I truly believe makes and develops good character. These words of integrity have inspired me to strive for excellence and be second to none. As you live in the present and work for the future, my singular word of advice to you, dear students, would be, like my late father said, not to live a life that is based on a sense of entitlement and instant gratification, but to strive for success and achievement. For example, many of you feel entitled to be given a mobile phone by your parents. Not just any mobile phone, mind you. It must have 3G connectivity. It must have an 8 megapixel camera at the very least, a host of fun apps, and terrific music and video capabilities, right? Wrong. If you begin life with such a sense of entitlement, a sense that your parents only exist to satisfy your desires and every retail need, you will not be motivated to achieve your goals. A life of entitlement, believe me, will dull your resourcefulness, your ability to face failure, and even an entrepreneurial drive. There is ample evidence to show that a life of entitlement creates underachievers. And most achievers are those that have faced failures and taken on challenges. Successful first-generation entrepreneurs are good examples of this. It was my father's refusal to pander to my sense of entitlement that made me entrepreneurial and innovative. I can certainly confess that. It has provided me with the strength to endure failure and disappointments and pursue hard-earned success. Your parents only wish the best for you and have worked hard to get you admitted to this fine institute so that you can have the best education. Now it is your turn to reward them by working hard to pursue the future gainfully. Now when I reflect on how things were when I was in college, India was a less developed country. We did not know what computers were, or for that matter, TVs or mobile phones. Information had to be accessed in libraries and textbooks, not on the internet. And games were played in playgrounds or at homes, not on gaming devices. Communication was face to face, not by phone or texting. And social media to us meant inter-college debates, educational trips, and writing to pen friends across the world. The technological advances of today and the personal devices they enable, computers, cell phones, the internet, tablets, these ought to have helped change the world for the better, much more than they have, by promoting greater awareness and understanding. With all these smart resources available today, the woes that plague the world should be declining in number and acuteness. There should be fewer pe poor people, 
less corruption, lower pollution levels, better garbage management, universal education, food and health for all. The reality as I know and as you do too is far different. We need to ask ourselves, what can we do to improve the reality we live in? How can we, as citizens of a great country, ensure a better life for all? Today, India needs all of us, especially young, capable people like you, to be responsible and address the myriad of challenges our country faces. Food security, health security, job security, energy security, and environmental sustainability. Dear students, remember that problems can be solved by saying I must do something instead of something must be done. So I would ask you to get involved and convert these challenges into opportunities that can help bring about transformational change in alleviating human suffering while creating wealth and prosperity for all. Technology has this transformational power that needs to be innovatively harnessed. For example, food security cannot be attained by a food security bill, but by boosting agricultural productivity through technologies like biotechnology and developing engineering and software solutions that improve the supply chain infrastructure that can ensure efficient delivery of food and nutrition to every strata of society. Similarly, health security can be realized with a combination of preventive and therapeutic measures. Immunization through vaccines and sanitation that Healthcare. obliterates open early diagnosis and provide clean drinking water coupled with micro health insurance key will allow for a sustainable low cost healthcare model. For that matter, job security cannot be ensured by employment guarantee schemes, but by creating real jobs that re rely on skill development and more importantly, self-employment. Energy security, likewise, cannot be attained through incremental oil imports, but through innovating alternate technologies like solar, wind, and biofuels. An environmental pollution cannot be stymied by preventing industrialization, but through clean and green technologies and I know that this institution is focusing on bioremediation, which is a very, very important part of that environmental sustainable solution. As budding technologists and engineers, go out and pursue these challenges with a sense of determination to find new solutions to old problems. Courage and perseverance are values that will be critical as you build your life. As a first generation entrepreneur, I'm immensely and intensely mindful of the fact that credibility builds success. Building credibility is not easy and requires the courage of your conviction and perseverance of your efforts to overcome the disappointments and failures that are intrinsic to realizing one's potential. As you just heard, I remember how difficult it was for me to overcome the credibility challenges I faced in my entrepreneurial years. Banks did not want to offer me credit. People were unwilling to be recruited. And companies did not wish to do business with me, all because I was a 25-year-old woman who was trying to sell products based on a novel technology called biotechnology. But that did not deter me. In fact, it inculcated a spirit of challenge and a very deep sense of purpose. It is this sense of determination that spurs you to overcome failure. Because remember, failure is temporary, but giving up is final. As a woman, I would like to touch upon the sensitive subject of gender barriers that exist within our society. I'm pleased to see that women are being well accepted in the urban workplace. However, 
we do know that society needs to do a lot more and the most critical of this is the change of mindset we must work towards a safe environment for women and this can only stem from mutual respect between men and women i am sure NIIT provides many opportunities for co-educational group assignments and projects and even sports and i ask you young men to treat your female colleagues with the respect that you accord to your peers it is well recognized that a progressive society is an egalitarian society especially when it comes to gender equality i would like to conclude by congratulating your parents for their selfless devotion in bringing you their children safely to the threshold of a future that has endless opportunities as franklin roosevelt said we may not be able to prepare the future for our children but we can at least prepare our children for the future i'm sure you have done this in good measure to your professors let me say in the midst of the trials and tribulations of the college life you have counseled strengthened and comforted these students as mentors they will remember these days for a long time to come and may they speak about you with the same affection and regard that i express for my teachers so many decades after i completed my college education and dear students college is indeed a second home where you learn some of life's greatest lessons so remember what you learn here these are simple life's lessons but they will take you far in life always try to change things for the better do not compromise on honesty transparency or candor do not lose your enthusiasm accept the past manage the present and work hard towards a better future for all focus on creating solutions and not drowning in problems above all never fear failure failure makes a great stepping stone to rise to higher challenges and i know this from my own experience as mahatma gandhi said the difference between what we do and what we are capable of doing would suffice to solve most of the world's problems may you be and make the difference that our country needs thank you very much and congratulations <laughs>